So let's think about our piece of string now. That piece of string is fixed at the two ends and this imposes some conditions on what standing waves are allowed in the string. Because if it's fixed at those two ends, we know that we need to have nodes at those two ends, which means only certain wavelengths of standing waves are allowed on the string of a specified length. So let's consider the simplest example. We can have nodes at the two ends and an anti-node in the middle. In this case we'd see one loop and we know that one loop is equal to half a wavelength. So in this case the wavelength of that standing wave would be double the length of the string. This example is known as the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic. Now we can think of another situation where we have two nodes at the end and also a node in the middle. In this case we'd have two loops in our piece of string. Two loops is equal to one wavelength, so in this case the length of the string is equal to one wavelength. And this case is known as the second harmonic. We could also think about having three loops on the piece of string. In that case we've got three half wavelengths is equal to L, so the wavelength of the, this standing wave is equal to two times the length divided by three. That's known as the third harmonic. In fact, we can think of any integer number of harmonics. So the nth harmonic is where we've got n loops on our piece of string. So we've got n half wavelengths along the piece of string. So the wavelength of the nth harmonic is given by 2 times the length of the string divided by n. Now we can use this to work out, well, what's the frequencies of these standing waves that are allowed on this piece of string. And we can actually show, we'll, we'll show it in the middle, in a minute, sorry, that the frequency is equal to n divided by 2l times the square root of t on mu. And what's nice about this relationship is that factor of n there, which is telling us that the for the nth harmonic, the, fundament, the harmonic frequency is equal to n times the fundamental frequency. So let's prove that now. Okay, so we're going to consider a piece of string with length L. And we're going to have a standing wave on that string, which means that there's some integer number of loops there. So we could in this not very neat diagram, n's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But we can have n as any integer. So we've already said that we know that the length of the string is then equal to n times half a wavelength, because each of these loops has the same length, it's lambda on 2, half a wavelength. And so this tells us that lambda is equal to 2l on n. And we'll call this the, this is the wavelength of the nth harmonic. So we're going to put a little subscript n there. For a different harmonic on this same piece of string with the same length, we'd have a different wavelength. Now what we're trying to find out is the frequency. And we know that V is equal to F lambda. So for the nth harmonic, this will be the frequency of the nth harmonic times the wavelength of the nth harmonic. And we've also shown that for a piece of string, the velocity is given by the square root of the tension divided by the mass per unit length. So these are properties of the string and they don't change as we change the harmonic that we play on the piece of string. Okay, so what we're trying to get is Fn. So we can write Fn is equal to one over lambda n times the square root of t on mu. This is lambda subscript n. So now we know that lambda subscript n is equal to 2L on n. So this is 1 over 2L on n root t on mu. And then we've got this divided by n on the denominator. So we're going to times the top and the bottom by n. And we end up with n over 2L root t on mu. So this tells us the frequency of the nth harmonic. So that's our harmonic frequency. Now the nice thing is that we can write F1. So this is for the first harmonic, which we discussed where we've got just one loop on that piece of string. So we've got half a wavelength on the piece of string. And we know that that's when n is equal to one. So this is one over two L root T on mu. 
So if we're calling that f1, then all our fn's are just equal to n times f1. So as soon as we know the fundamental frequency, we can work out the frequency of the nth harmonic just by multiplying that frequency by n. So what you can see here is the second harmonic because we've got two of these loops. Now at the moment the frequency generator is set to 23 hertz. What I want you to do now is predict what frequency will we need for the fundamental harmonic for this string, the fundamental frequency, and what will be the frequency of the third and the fourth harmonic. Okay, write those predictions down into Moodle now.